بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم we have integral x from 0 to infinity log x squared between brackets the hyperbolic cosine of x over the hyperbolic sine of x squared minus 1 over x squared call this integral omega let's start by doing integration by parts omega is equal to integral x from 0 to infinity log x squared d 1 over x minus 1 over the hyperbolic sine of x the derivative of 1 over x is minus 1 over x squared the derivative of the hyperbolic cosecant of x is the hyperbolic cosine of x divided by the square of the hyperbolic sine of x. We get the term minus integral x from 0 to infinity, 1 over x minus 1 over the hyperbolic sine of x. We need to differentiate this function. We get 2 log x times 1 over x. We have this integral here. We also need to multiply these two functions of x and investigate the limits as x tends to infinity and as x tends to 0 from above. We can write this limit as limit x tends to infinity log x squared over x times 1 minus x over the hyperbolic sine of x. If we focus on this part, the limit as x tends to infinity of x over the hyperbolic sine of x, applying L'Hopital's rule is the limit of 1 divided by the hyperbolic cosine of x, which tends to infinity as x tends to infinity. So x over the hyperbolic sine of x tends to 0 as x tends to infinity. For this part here, both the numerator and denominator tend to infinity as x tends to infinity. Applying L'Hopital's rule, we have the limit as x tends to infinity of the derivative of log x squared, which is 2 log x over x divided by the derivative of x, which is 1. We get 2, limit as x tends to infinity, log x over x. We are again in an infinity over infinity situation. Applying L'Hopital's rule, this limit is limit as x tends to infinity of 1 over x divided by 1, and this tends to 0 as x tends to infinity. This limit here is equal to 0. To evaluate the other limit, I multiply and divide by x. So we have limit as x tends to 0 from above of x, log x squared, times 1 over x, between brackets 1 over x, minus 1 over the hyperbolic sine of x. This part here can be written as the hyperbolic sine of x minus x over x squared times the hyperbolic sine of x. As x tends to 0, we find ourselves in a 0 over 0 situation. By applying L'Hopital's rule three times, we get the limit as x tends to 0 of the hyperbolic sine of x, and this is 1. Downstairs, this part tends to 0, that tends to 0, and this one tends to 6 as x tends to 0. This part tends to 1 sixth as x tends to 0. What about this part? Here it is rewritten as log x squared over x to the minus 1. As x tends to 0 from above, the numerator tends to infinity. Also the denominator, we are in an infinity over infinity situation. Applying L'Hopital's rule, we get the limit as x tends to 0 of 2 log x times x to the minus 1 over minus x to the minus 2. This is simplified as minus 2, limit as x tends to 0 from above, log x over x minus 1. Applying L'Hopital's rule one more time, we get minus 2 limit as x tends to 0 from above, x to the minus 1 over minus x to the minus 2 x to the minus 1 over x to the minus 2 is x, so the limit is 0 as x tends to 0. This limit is also equal to 0, and omega is equal to this integral here. The next step is to apply the following series expansion for the hyperbolic cosecant function. For a non-zero real number x, this difference is 2x, summation g from 1 to infinity, minus 1 to the g, divided by x squared plus y squared j squared. This is an infinite sum. It is summation g from 1 to big N of this summand, and then we take the limit as n tends to infinity. We can use the dominated convergence theorem to justify swapping the order of integration and limit. We need to take the integrand and upper bound its magnitude by a function that depends only on x, the dummy variable of integration, and not on n, the variable with respect to which we are taking the limit. Then we need to show that the upper bound itself is integrable. If this is true, then we can take this limit outside. We end up with the integral applied to a finite sum, and it's not a problem because integrals are linear, we can integrate term by term. The magnitude of a real number is equal to the magnitude of the real number times minus one. We can split this sum into odd and even terms. In this part, g is replaced by 2g minus one, and in that part, g is replaced by 2g. From this part here, if g is equal to one, we have one over x squared plus y squared. Here it is. And then the summation is from two to n. Change g to g plus one. The new index is from one to n minus one. 2g minus one becomes 2g plus one. From this summation here, separate the term corresponding to g equal to big N. The magnitude is equal to 1 over x squared plus pi squared minus 1 over x squared plus pi squared times 2n all squared. And then we have summation g from 1 to n minus 1. We have this difference 1 over x squared plus pi squared 2g plus 1 squared minus 1 over x squared plus pi squared 2g squared. Note that 2g plus 1 is greater than 2g. We have the same inequality if we square and multiply by pi squared and at x squared. The reciprocal of this left-hand side is less than the reciprocal of the right-hand side, which means that the terms that we have here are negative. 
this magnitude is equal to this quantity minus this number plus this negative quantity. So an upper bound is 1 over x squared plus pi squared. We have log x in the integrand. If x is greater than or equal to 1, then log x is non-negative. The magnitude of this sum multiplied by log x is less than log x divided by x squared plus y squared. And 1 over x squared plus y squared is less than 1 over x squared. When x is greater than 1, we can upper bound the integrand by log x divided by x squared. Is this function integrable from 1 to infinity? Yes. We can do integration by parts, and we get that this integral is a finite number. Our original integration is from 0 to infinity. So we need now to take care of the case in which x is strictly between 0 and 1. Here is the sum, and here is log x. Now x is between 0 and 1, so the absolute value of log x is minus log x. Then we have the magnitude of the sum. Let's apply the triangle inequality. The magnitude of the sum is less than or equal to the sum of the magnitudes. And the magnitude of minus 1 to the g is 1. The sum is less than or equal to 1 over pi squared j squared. We have this summation here, and it is upper bounded by having the sum from 1 to infinity. And this is zeta of 2, which is pi squared over 6. The magnitude of the integrand is upper bounded by minus log x over 6 when x is between 0 and 1. Is this function integrable? Yes, it is. Again, doing integration by parts, we obtain a finite number. We can upper bound the integrand here with a function that does not depend on n, a function that depends only on x, and this function is integrable. It gives a finite result when we integrate from 0 to infinity. We can employ the dominated convergence theorem and take the limit outside. When we take the limit outside, there is no problem in interchanging the order of integration and finite summation. So we do the integration term by term. We do the change of variables, x equal to by gt. We get an integral also from 0 to infinity. Log x becomes log by g plus log t. In the denominator, we get pi squared, g squared, t squared, plus pi squared, j squared. That's pi squared, g squared, times t squared plus 1. And dx is by g dt. All in all, we get 4 summation over g minus 1 to the g. Downstairs, we have by g. Because we have this by g over by g squared. We have integral t from 0 to infinity, log by g plus log t over t squared plus 1. Integral t from 0 to infinity, log t over t squared plus 1. If we change t to t minus 1, we have an integral from 0 to infinity. dt is replaced by dt over t squared. Log t is replaced by minus log t. In the denominator, we get t to the minus 2 plus 1. When multiplied by t squared, we get t squared plus 1. And then there is this minus sign. Our integral is equal to minus 1 times itself, which means that the integral is equal to 0. Omega is equal to 4 summation g from 1 to infinity minus 1 to the g over by g log by plus log g. Then we have integral t from 0 to infinity 1 over t squared plus 1. And this is the inverse tangent of t. And when we use the limits of integration, we get pi over 2. This pi goes away with that pi and then 4 divided by 2 is 2. So we have these two sums. In one of them, we have log pi, which can be taken outside the summation. In the other, we have log g. This summation here is minus the natural logarithm of 2. This summation here and also the series representation of 1 over the hyperbolic sine of x have appeared in previous videos on this channel. The result of this summation is in terms of the stitchless constants. We have the special case in which k is equal to 1. From here, we get log 2 squared over 2. When k is equal to 1, this summation has one term, and this term is equal to log 2 times gamma of 0. And gamma of 0 is the euler mascaronis constant. The integral of interest is minus 2 log by log 2 minus log 2 squared plus 2 log 2 small gamma.